Well, the Israelites, when they were in the desert, did a tent of meetings. How many of you have heard of that phrase, a tent of meetings? Which is where uh, they would set up and God gave them in, uh, explicit instructions on how to set up this tabernacle. There was a table that was supposed to be a certain way. If you go to Exodus and it begins in Exodus 30 and goes to the end of Exodus to the 40th chapter, God has given the people instructions on the tabernacle, on the table, on the basin, and everything. And so as the people moved around, then they would set up this tent of meetings. And when God would come and, the, and a cloud would cover the tent of meetings, the people would know that God was in the tabernacle that was there. And while God was there, no one went in and they didn't move. Then later on, Solomon built the temple. The big temple in Jerusalem. And we recall, we've talked about this, that the Holy of Holies, the inside of the inside of the inside of the inside of the temple, only one priest once a year gets to go in there and commune with God. And now, God blew all that out of the water and said, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to go with the up close and personal method of coming as one of you. I can you even begin to keep your mind around that? that this God of creation would come and, and live among us as a baby. Don't think of Jesus as an adult yet, but as this vulnerable baby entrusted to human beings. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of love. That's a big risk. It's something that's hard for me to comprehend. But it's what we believe. It's what we believe. We don't know how all that worked. We don't need to know how all of it worked. At least, I'll speak for myself. I just know, I know it in here. And I believe it. Now, as I was writing this sermon, there was any number of lists I could have gone to to go over what happened this past year or these past two years. And you talk to anybody and everybody says, well, we just don't know what the next year is going to bring. And it's just, there's a feeling of us wringing our hands about this, uh, being nervous, being scared, being worried. And I'm not saying we, we stick our head in the sand, but I, I want to say to us that God is with us. And as followers of Jesus, as followers of this infant baby boy, part of what God needs us to do is to be John the Baptist and to point out all the places where God is getting up close and personal in our own lives and in the lives of people around us. Where did you see God this past year up close? and personal? Where did you experience the power of God? I have a couple stories of a couple people who, who did. 
brandon jones his mother in law was dying of lung cancer in the final stages and he says she had always told us that when i'm on my deathbed i want that broccoli dish from that restaurant in baltimore maryland you know everybody's got their thing well as she was dying jones emailed uh, Steve Chu, who was one of the co-owners of this restaurant in Baltimore, and asked him if he would send him the recipe so that Brandon and his wife could make this tempura broccoli with fresh herbs, red onions, and vin rice vinegar. Uh, his wife, Rena, was hoping that the chef would give them the recipe so that they could do this for her mother that weekend. But instead, uh, Chef Chu offered to drive the six hours from Baltimore to their home in Vermont and make the dish for the mother-in-law fresh himself. And so the very next day, he brought his, co his colleague and his co-owner and they drove up and they set up one of those, uh, a food truck. And it was April, so it was still cold in Vermont. And uh, they got the, the uh, fryer going and everything set. And so they made this tempura dish alongside some tofu nuggets, spicy peanut sauce, roasted garlic. Now, that might not be your favorite meal, but this was her favorite meal. And so they knock on the door, and the kids have her come to the door, and she can't believe her eyes. And now here's the cool thing about this story. This chef did not know that he knew her. He was just doing it out of the kindness of his heart. And when she opened the door, he recognized her as one of his customers who every time she came to Baltimore would come to his restaurant and tell him how much she enjoyed his food. So he, too, saw her, and there was this... The mother kept saying, I don't understand. You drove all the way up here to cook for me. She couldn't believe it. And you know when you have cancer, sometimes you have a hard time eating. And she had not been eating very well, but she ate all this, and there was some uh, left over. Later, Rena Jones said that my mom cried about their generosity, and so did I. They made so much food that she had it the next day for lunch. It's something that we'll never forget. I'll carry it with me forever. So here her mom is dying, and she's got this event that's going on in their lives, and she has this up-close and personal visit of love. And then... Chef Chu told the newspaper, to me it was a huge honor to be able to help fulfill the family's wishes. It was about her, not us. There was a javelin thrower, a Polish uh, javelin thrower. She uh, auctioned off her silver medal. There was an eight-year-old girl, a Polish eight-year-old girl, who needed uh, surgery from Stanford University. She needed heart surgery. And so this young woman, her name is Maria, she auctioned off her silver medal from the 2020 games and made $100,000 and gave that to the family so that this little eight-year-old girl could come from Poland and get the surgery. And this is what she said to the newspaper, quote, it's only an object, but it can be of great value to others. And my favorite story uh, comes from this magazine that I get, <clears throat> um, and it's about Pastor Todd Bishop. Now, Pastor Todd is the pastor at Church Unleashed. It's called Church Unleashed, I love that name, in com, uh, Comic, C O M M O C K, Comic, New York. And Pastor uh, Todd had been reaching out to this uh, to the Long Island University kids, and one of the kids had come to him and said, hey, pastor, would you do a Bible study for us on, on Sunday uh, afternoon? And in his, as he's writing the article, Pastor Todd says, he goes, which is exactly what I would have thought, okay, I preached three sermons, three worship services, and now you want me to lead a Bible study on Sunday afternoon when I'm exhausted. But he did it because he's a faithful servant. 
And this group became his favorite group, that he would be with these young people as they're going through all of their stuff, and they would get together for Bible study, and the Bible study grew and grew over the course of a couple years. And he had a, uh, a mantra that he shared with the, with the group, and it was, no matter what, God is good. No matter what, God is good. And so this helped them in their ups and downs. Well, it was December, and some of the students had gone home for break. And uh, Pastor Todd got a call that Clay, one of the young men from the university who attended the Bible study, had been murdered in his hometown. He called the father and said, I'm going to come and I'm going to bring some of the boys. So they loaded up a van and they drove the 16 hours from New York down to Tennessee, which is where Clay lived. And they wanted to go to the place where it happened, to the, the lot where he had gotten killed. Um, and so Pastor Todd took them there. And he said, as we uh, got out of the van and, and walked onto the property, it was so palpable, just the grief and everything that was going on. And he reminded the boys about when Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus and how Jesus was so broken up and so upset about the death of his friend. And he reminded the boys of that. And so then they formed a circle and they held hands and they prayed. And when they opened their eyes, there was this man there with a guitar. They, they, none of them knew where he had come from, but he said to them, I'm going to sing you all a song. And so he started singing, uh, I heard this was Leonard Skinner's song, Free Bird, and, um, which was one of Clay's favorite songs. And then later, uh, after the song was over, the man looked at his dog and said, hey, Trigger, come on, let's get going. And Trigger happened to be the name of Clay's dog also. So one of the boys, as they were leaving, said to Pastor Todd, you know, this was kind of weird, his words. And Pastor Todd reminded them that in Hebrews 13, we are encouraged to welcome strangers into our life because we never know when these strangers are going to be disguised as angels. So they had walked a little bit and they turned around to look and the man and his dog were nowhere to be found. Now Pastor Todd writes, was it an angel in disguise? I ask, does it matter? It was a visit. It was a gift of God, up close and personal, whether it was an angel in disguise or a person flesh and blood. God's desire for connection with us is strong. And Jesus is the bridge that reveals God's heart to us. Jesus is the bridge that reveals God's heart to us. And the more we are connected to God, the more we will see where God is at work in the world. It goes together. And sometimes the only way to explain it is the way John did with poetry. Now I told Algonquin, I said, I was going to try to write you all a poem. And they all giggled like, well, Pastor, you couldn't do that. Well, I know I couldn't have done it, but they were a little quick to giggle, I think. They could have at least, you know. <laughs> but anyway, they know me so well over there. But I did find a book by Joyce Rupp, Fresh Bread, Spiritual Nourishment. Joyce Rupp, I commend her to you. She has many, many books. And Joyce wrote a poem about the new year, and so I'm going to read that to you. Welcoming a New Year is the name of the poem. A new year stands on my doorstep, ready to enter my life's journey. Something in me welcomes this visitor, the hope of bountiful blessings, the joy of a new beginning, the freshness of unclaimed surprises. 
Something in me rebuffs this visitor. The swiftness of the coming, the boldness of the entrance, the challenge of a year's goodbye. Something in me fears this visitor. The unnamed events of future days. The wisdom needed to walk love well. The demands of giving away and growing. A new year stands on my doorstep. With fragile caution, I move to open the door for its entrance. And my heart leaps with surprise. Joy jumps in my eyes, for there, there beside the brand new year, stands my God with arms outstretched. He smiles and gently asks me, can we walk this year together? And so I, so overwhelmed with goodness, can barely whisper my reply. Welcome in. John's gospel, more than any other, goes in such depth with every encounter that people have with Jesus. John does not do a short two-line encounter. All of the encounters that the people in John's gospel have with him are 35, 40, 40 verses in depth. And so this year, may we have many up-close and personal encounters with the living God. And may they be so much a part of us that we cannot help but to be John the Baptist and to say and to live it out. There, there goes God. God lives in here among us. May we testify to this through the way we live and the gifts that we give. Amen. I invite you to turn to your insert. And this communion table is another place where God gets up close and personal with us, right? Christ invites to his table all who desire to know and love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us now acknowledge those th things, excuse me, those things that have separated us from God and from each other. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we are distracted and forgetful of your love. We have sinned against you and are deeply sorry. We repent of our disregard of you, of each other, and your creation. Let us take a moment to lift up our individual earnest prayers for pardon and deliverance. Christ was born to bring us out of the shadow of death, the fear of life. He was born to free us and to liberate us to a newness of life. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. And so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness. You brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, glory to you in the highest and peace to all peoples on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and weighed with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman, on that night so long ago, and on that night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you and he offered it to his disciples and said, take and eat this is my body, which is broken for you and for many. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks to you. And he offered it to his disciples. And he said, drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, our very selves, our bodies, our souls. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with each other and one with Christ and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. And now will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Glory forever. Amen. And so we who are many are one because we partake of the one loaf, the body of Christ broken for us, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So I just want to remind you, everyone who is here is welcome to come to the table and share with us. We're going to do this together. So the ushers are going to bring these to you. Just grab one for yourself, and please wait until we all have one, and then we will do it uh, together. So if you're uh, joining us at home, uh, get your communion elements out, and we will uh, share them all together once everyone has received their things.
So as we peel back the clear wrapper, this is the body of Christ broken for us. And as we peel back the purple, it is a little, little tricky. The blood of Christ shed for us. There's a little place in your pew where you can put them, and we will pick them up afterwards. And so, friends, what shall we say after reception of God's gracious gift? Loving God, we thank you from the depth of our hearts for your great love for us as expressed in the life, death, of resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we take this love that we have received and share it with whomever we meet on our journey in the days ahead. Amen. Couple announcements. If you wish uh, to support the efforts of our churches, you can place your offering box at the back on the way out. Uh, you can send your checks to Central, uh, just designate whether it goes to Algonquin or Central. And we also are, uh, have online giving now. So when you get the email from the church, if you scroll down where you click on the Facebook page, it says online giving and you could give to support uh, the mission and ministries that are happening in this place. Uh, you could also go to our website, which is www.c for central, U-M-C, Sioux for Sioux St. Marie, S-O-O dot org. I want to thank you all for joining us this morning, especially those of you who are with us who are traveling or who are here in town. And Pat, thank you. And uh, Maddie, thank you. And thank you to the Algonquin folks who helped me earlier, Bob and Bernita, uh, Cara, Emily, Todd, and Mary Beth, and my uh, ushers back there, Kelly, Norb, and Tom. Thank you all very much. God bless you. Please stand for our closing hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, 224. Next Sunday, we will start having adult Sunday school again, so I would encourage you to do that, and we'll also be having a Sunday school for our kids. So, um, friends, we have gathered in this place. A child has been born among us with a love so immense, so deep, so wide, that you can't escape it. 
And so take that love and go out into a world in need and share it up close and personal with the people in your lives, family, strangers, sojourner. And do it in the name of Christ, Emmanuel. Amen.